The demand for high-end corals has really taken off over the last several years. Corals that are rare and that have multiple colors demand the highest prices, many costing over $100 for a piece no greater than an inch. And it's actually quite common these days to see pieces going for over $500. These pieces always come with a catchy trade name, and when you combine that catchy trade name with the high price tag, it's really great marketing aimed at those reefers who are out for exclusivity. But it's not to say that it's 100% a marketing gimmick. There are certainly a lot of coral out there that justify the high price. However, to go along with that, there are a lot of coral out there that are just totally not worth it. And the goal of this video is to help you figure out which is which. But in order for me to do that, I'm going to have to introduce some uncertainty. I'm going to have to call into question some things. And overall, the tone of this video may be negative. However, I'm really just trying to give you the tools that you need to make the best buying choices. Now, there's one thing that you need to keep in mind throughout this entire video, and it's that this is just one reefer's opinion, one reefer's experiences, and it's quite possible that the way that I run my tank is not conducive to reproducing these beautiful pictures that you see out there. So keep that in mind. Take this video with a grain of salt. So we first have to talk about what goes into a coral picture. That picture of that coral that you see on your device is the result of so many different variables. First, you have all the factors that make up the color in real life. You have tank conditions such as nutrient levels, PAR, lighting color, temperature, type of lighting, etc. On top of all those in-tank variables, you have the numerous photography techniques such as brand of camera, in-camera settings, photography conditions such as lighting and filters, and post-processing techniques used. Additionally, the quality or type of screen from which the picture is being viewed can change the appearance of the coral. In other words, the same exact picture can look a little different if I'm looking at it on my phone, computer, or my tablet. And lastly, the way we see color and the way our brains process color is different. I'm sure a lot of you remember this dress. So with all those different variables at play, to expect that your piece is going to look exactly like a picture is unreasonable. But it should be close. Another implication is that although two different corals may seem different in the picture, there is a good chance that they will end up looking the same. Probably the best example of this for me are these pink polyped Acropora tenuous. I have over six variations of this, all with different names, and all of them ended up looking pretty much the same in my tank. And to be clear, I'm not saying that people's pictures are fake. I'm saying that even though they look different in different tanks, there is a good chance they will end up looking the same under identical conditions. Let me play devil's advocate here though and show you a different example. This particular Acropora florida has been around for a while, maybe over 10 years being passed amongst hobbyists. Take note of this shade of green here. So here is another Acropora florida that appeared on the reefing scene more recently. Notice the different shade of green. These different shades of green have held up and I have both pieces in the same tank, so unlike the pink tenuous, these two Acropora florida are obviously two different color morphs. It's interesting to note the time release of these corals. All these pink polyp tenuous were all released recently, within the last couple years, while the two Acropora florida showed up in the reefing scene many years apart probably in the range of 5 to 10 years. It's quite possible that these pink polyp tenuous came from the same ocean coral farm, got distributed to different vendors, and over time, considering all those variables that I talked about earlier, translated to a different looking coral on your screen, whereas the Acropora florida are legitimately two different color morphs. So this is something to keep in mind. The truth is, you really don't know for sure how a coral is going to turn out, and it's up to you to decide how much you're willing to pay to find out. For the most part, you need some kind of filter if you're taking blue LED pictures. There is just so much blue light if you don't, the camera simply can't handle it all and you'll end up with a bad picture. The problem is that, depending on which filter you use, it can exaggerate colors. Let me illustrate my point. This coral is an Acropora latistella. This picture represents the coral under a daylight spectrum, about 10,000 Kelvin color temperature, taken without any filters. 
If we turn off the whites and take the picture under royal blue and violet LEDs and stick on a yellow filter on the camera, this is what it looks like. Here is a picture under the same lighting conditions, but this time taken with an orange filter. Again, same lighting conditions, but this time the picture is taken with a brown filter. Now, according to my eyes, the brown filter best represents the appearance of this coral in blue light. Both orange and yellow filters exaggerate the colors, and that's where the problem lies. Orange and yellow filters don't represent what we see in real life unless we are wearing orange or yellow glasses. But for some reason, the industry standard seems to be that we take these pictures with an orange filter. At the end of the day, an experienced eye would be able to tell, and to a certain extent expect, that most blue light pictures are taken with an orange filter. Because that's just what people do. But unfortunately, the less experienced eyes may get fooled by the oversaturation and expect that in real life. So if you're disappointed with what you've heard up to this point, I'm going to knock your expectations down another peg. But before I do that, I need to briefly talk about what is a coral colony. A coral colony is a bunch of polyps genetically identical, all interconnected and communicating through the cenosarc, or skin of the coral as we hobbyists sometimes call it. The cenosarc contains the gastrovascular canal system that links the polyps and allows them to share nutrients and symbiotic zooxanthellae. In other words, to some extent, polyps are relying on one another. For example, the polyps way down in the lower and more interior parts of the colony probably aren't getting as much light or flow than the other parts of the colony. But that's not really a problem for them since they are getting help from other polyps. And it's likely the reason that healthy colonies don't die on the underside despite not getting adequate light. So what happens when you cut a frag off a colony? And the point that I'm trying to make here is that you are severing that communication and asking the small little fragment to live on its own. And here comes the inherent difficulty with that situation. Because of this trauma, the frag is likely to lose color and or not look as healthy. It's not all of them, but many frags will lose color or vibrance after they've been fragged. And these fragments often don't start to gain their color back until they settle into the new system and start growing. So the bottom line, unfortunately, is that it's the customer's responsibility, in my opinion, to fully color up frags. In a perfect world, you would receive a beautiful frag that is a miniature version of the mother colony. But the truth is, is that it's just not possible for many frags. This ultimate F-Low is one that fits the category. It often loses these purple tips soon after it's fragged. This is my pearlberry. Look at how these fresh cuts resemble the branches of the colony, while this old frag, notice it's encrusted, has lost its vibrance. So the point is, just make sure that your expectations are not too high when you receive new pieces. And if you're someone who only likes to buy WYSIWYG, just keep in mind that you may be missing out on some nice pieces that just happen to be bad WYSIWYG candidates because they just turn ugly. So you may be saying to yourself, Abe, you highlighted a lot of negative about buying coral and now I don't even want to buy any. Well, you know, sorry, that was not my intention, but just know that there are ways to overcome these challenges. Number one, remember that if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Number two, Google search name pieces to see if hobbyists are able to pull the same colors as the vendors. If you don't see hobbyists able to generate a picture that is similar to the vendors, and or you aren't seeing it being sold by hobbyists at all, then it probably didn't pan out to the originator's pictures and price. Number three, only buy coral for which you have a colony picture to reference. What goes along with this is that you should ignore the color of the encrusting parts of the corals, especially if you see weird circly or swirly patterns on them. Whatever is happening on the encrusting part of the coral should not be included in your decision. The branch of a colony is your best indication of what you are buying. 
Number four, be skeptical of colors when the background is totally blacked out. I'm not saying that just because the background is blacked out, the colors are 100% fake. No. I'm just saying that you have to be extra careful in your evaluation when you don't have other objects in the picture for reference. Number five, buy a coral because you like the color and structure, not because of the name. Number six, buy coral from someone or a vendor whose colors you can reproduce. Unfortunately, since corals take a while to color up, you may not realize you have a good seller until six months after you purchase corals from them. Number seven, always best to see the coral in person. The problem with buying locally though is that your selection is not as good as buying online. Number eight, top-down views are many times nicer than side views of corals. So it's something to keep in mind since most of us don't look at our tanks from the top down. Despite the potential unknown when buying coral, the truth is is that most pictures out there are pretty close. And though I think that skepticism is warranted when looking at some of these pictures, I've been wrong at times, so by all means if you have a little bit of money to throw around, take a chance because you'll be delightfully surprised sometimes. And if you don't have a lot of money to throw around, well that's okay too because there are plenty of established pieces out there that won't break the bank and that are totally beautiful. So that's going to do it for this one. Be skeptical, but take chances. Remember that high price doesn't necessarily equate to high value. And most importantly, remember that extraordinary results can be achieved with ordinary pieces. Mm -hmm.